What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the live stream tonight. Really excited. Whole bunch of stuff out here. <laughs> we kind of a weird. There's some knives you guys haven't seen that I've already reviewed, but they're different versions of. We're going to be talking about that. Um, anyways, I wanted to share this with you guys. So right before I started the live stream, I uh, looked at the the overall channel numbers through TubeBuddy. Anybody who, if you have a YouTube channel uh, and you have a lot of like uploads and stuff, you want to manage them easily. I don't get paid by TubeBuddy. This isn't a paid promotion. Seriously, TubeBuddy is worth it. But anyways, I was looking at the numbers through TubeBuddy and I just wanted to share this with everybody. Um, yesterday morning, the channel crossed over 6 million views total. So thank you very much to everybody who has been watching, whether you are a new subscriber uh, or if you have been around since the very beginning. Uh, yeah, we just, we just collectively hit over 6 million views yesterday morning. So thank you very much, everybody. Very, very cool. Very exciting. Uh, and I think today we just crossed over 34,000 subscribers. So that's cool. Um, here's to <laughs> however long this is. I plan to keep doing this for a very long time. I'm not going anywhere. So yeah, hopefully we'll just keep celebrating odd little milestones. What's up, everybody? The official Obama. Nice of Obama to make it to my live stream. Really cool guy. I know you're busy, uh, but I, I respect you for <laughs> taking the time to make it to my live stream. <laughs> oh, man. Justin EDC. We take a minute to shout out a channel here. Ethan Ruins EDC. Seen him chatting a little bit here. Seen him in my comments section. Go check out Ethan Ruins EDC. Uh, go check out his YouTube channel. Just take you a minute. It just take it take you ten seconds to go check him out. Um, type it in exactly as it's showing, Ethan. If you want to say something so people can see your name, take a moment to go subscribe to his channel. Check him out. He's new. Uh, or I believe. I'm sorry if you're not, Ethan, but I believe you. You mentioned that you were new. So yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you guys like that green collage you have. So so here's the deal with some of these. You guys are seeing some older. Right, some different, but I've decided to slowly reacquire some of my favorite budget knives because what I've been doing for anybody who's new, I, I like give away a lot of knives that I really like. And I was like, man, I should really have some of this stuff around because I actually do really like it and it serves for a great comparison example. So I was like, I'll take this opportunity to purchase some really cool variants of um, some of the knives that I, you know, used to own and then gave away. Um, I love the Praxis. I gave my old one away, so I repurchased one in blue and gold. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, I just repurchased the, and I mean it, I purchased them. I did not ask for a handout from the companies. Uh, the CJRB uh, Feldspar, I love this knife. And I had to pick up the Kalashnikov, and I thought, you know, screw it. Let's get a green one. <laughs> this is awesome. For 40 bucks? Hey, these are so cool, these colored ones, right? They have blue and red and green, so I picked up the green one. I got a bunch of lightnings here. We're going to talk about that here in a second. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I have seen Civivi's new budget budget brand. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm going to refer to it as. But uh, but yeah. So um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, it came with a good old Kalashny. The Ordis is out. Do you prefer it over the Praxis? So, oh, it's really hard to say. Like, in terms of, like, overall for 2020... Um, the Ortis is really, really standing out for like budget knife of the year for, for this channel, right? But overall, between the, it's really hard to say because I like them both for different reasons. This is a much bigger knife, right? This one's smaller and has the opening slot. I don't know. I don't know which one I like better. I mean, as far as like Civivi knives go, the Praxis and the Ortis, in my opinion, are the two best knives they've ever come out with. Um, if the Ortis was in G10, it might be a little bit of an easier thing for me, right? Um, but uh, let's talk about these lightnings here for a second. So I've got three lightnings. This guy on the left is my brother's. This is an old lightning. This is one from 2017, maybe even 2016. Very well loved. This is a brand new lightning that I just purchased the other day. And surprisingly, a lot of the stuff that you guys have been telling me about what was different... 
there actually are some differences. We're gonna talk about this. The screws are a little different. They got rid of some of the poop marks, right? Uh, yeah, fit and finish a little better. And this, if anybody doesn't know, this is a Lightning Elite, which I did not know existed. You can see right here, Lightning Elite. How much does this cost, you ask? Uh, the same that the regular Lightning costs, 35 bucks or 40 bucks, is, maybe it's five bucks more. Blade shape's a little better. There are a few noticeable differences in terms of overall quality and fit and finish. It's pretty impressive. There's a couple of things that I'm kind of confused by, but yeah, this is like the new and improved Lightning. So, kind of cool. The blade is different, has a fuller in it. There's a double-bladed or a double-edged version of this too. So, we'll talk, we'll chat about those tonight, and then um, I'll do a comparison video between all of them. So, anyways, Chad I just bought another Praxis from White Mountain Knives, Odie Green and Black Candle, Civibi's best knife IMO. It certainly is one of their best knives. It's one of the best budget knives that's ever existed, for sure. I would really like to shave the flipper tab off the Praxis and have a... Uh, slot milled into that thing just so i can do the reverse flick um that would just create a if you can imagine here with me for a second have a slot milled into this it's very similar to the slot on the demco just right here on the flat i don't know it's kind of it's going to be kind of tough because the flat doesn't run very far so they have to cut it into the swedge which i don't know but god this without the flipper tab and a slot in it not enough room really for a spidey hole but Oh, I'm basically turning it. It's all, it'd almost be a budget shaman at that point. Um, let's see here. We always have one salty dislike. There, um, the reason I know it's probably the same person over and over again, well, it's probably not, but it's, it's like one of a few rotating people. It's because whenever I upload a video, uh, the dislikes that come in are like immediate. <laughs> It's like right when I upload the vi like any video that I upload, it's like 30 seconds after there's a dislike. <laughs> Cracks me up every time. <laughs> Maybe it's somebody who actually does like my content and is just messing with me, right? Doesn't matter. Let me move this stuff up so we can get some of this stuff back in frame. I'm noticing here I put the camera a little bit too close tonight. It's okay. I like it to look crowded. Always looks good when it's crowded. All right, let's see here. How hard does the Kalashnikov fire compare to the Protec? Uh, this brand new Kalashnikov, I was talking with my brother about this today. It actually fires really hard. This is the hardest firing Kalashnikov that I've felt in a while. There's a noticeable difference between this one and the other two that I handled like over a year ago. This versus my Protec, the Protec still fires about 20% harder. Now that could be due to the fact that the blade is a little bit longer and a little bit thicker, right? This is also the hardest firing Protec that I've, this and a couple others maybe. Yeah, the Protec still fires harder, but this thing fires surprisingly hard. This Kalashnikov definitely fires harder than, the, than any Kershaw launch series auto that I've felt. Now the problem is that it's 50-50 on whether or not you're going to get some up and down or side to side blade play. This one has a little a bit of both. But I'll tell you what, that one I reviewed uh, a while ago, my buddy who's owned his for 13 years, his has up and down and side to side play and he's never taken it apart and never cleaned it. He's totally fine. So I don't know that I really care, you know. And I, when I say up and down, it's very minor. It's a different type, type of lock, right? It's a plunge lock. So up and down blade play on a plunge lock is very different than up and down blade play on a frame lock. You do not want up and down play on a, on a frame lock. Side to side, that can be tightened out, right? How many layers is that Damascus you mean on the, on this? I can't remember. It's not very many. It's a, it's actually a laminate. It's VG10 core, and then it's laminated with 40 layer. Anybody know on the, on this guy, uh, the, uh, the Delica, um, something like that. It's, it's laminate. It's not, it's not all the way through, you know, Damascus. So, um, let's see here. FL Knife Life, Desert Warrior, Gas, been in my wish list for months. Oh, Desert War Desert Dessert. I always forget which one, which way spell spell which. <laughs> I forget every time. Let's see here. Stop spamming, Obama. You jerk. 
<laughs> Craig Moreland, from a practicality standpoint, I'd go Malibu. SBR is great too, though if you don't mind the shorter blade. I love the SBR, and I also love the Malibu. You can't go wrong with either of those. Moiter Fire, thank you very much for the donation. Hey, MC, I was looking for a $100 to $200 knife. I was really looking at the Wii 904C Jix. Do you have any suggestions? Um, if it's the Jix that I'm thinking of, hang on one sec. I'm going to look it up. We 904C. One moment, one moment. Um, let me look at a picture here. Yeah, that's the version that's a little bit better. Honestly, that thing is monstrously thick behind the edge to the point that, I mean, even with the hollow grind, if I'm remembering correctly, I did review that knife a long time ago, and it's just kind of clunky. Um, if you're really big into the look, the quality's there. It's just the, the, the edge geometry is kind of weird, and it has the recurves. You have to really like recurves. Um, but as far as the jigs goes, there's two of them. That's the better one. Um, so it's all right. Uh, for 100 to 200 bucks, I mean, at the peak end, the Shaman's great. So is the Super Freak. Um, the the uh, Ritter Hogue RSK MK1 G2 is one of the very best knives you can buy in that price range. Um, but uh, those are all American, not, not that I'm specifically suggesting American models over everything else, but those are some of my peak recommendations for people looking at, at knives between one and two hundred dollars. All right, okay, yeah, we get it, Obama, thanks. We get it, everybody thinks you're real. Um, calm down. Let's see here. Hate sounds, that knife is so sexy. Cool, man. I'm not sure which one you're referring to, but thank you. I tried to lay out a bunch of sexy knives tonight. Um, let's see. Mr. McKenzie, what's up, man? And Knives with Brooke. What's going on, Brooke? Brooke's at, Brooke's at rocking that purple helmet. Some There's there's a few red helmets in here. Floydian's in here, too. A few red helmets in here that are just creeping up on gold. For sure. The first gold knight helmets are soon to appear. And then I'm going to have to make the final helmet. There's a two-year helmet. <laughs> 122 people in here. Thank you so much for showing up to the live stream tonight, guys. Welcome. If this is your first time, uh, we're, we're going to get into it. <laughs> um, I promise I will talk about the Denko uh, here in just a second. I've thought about a rainbow helmet, but here's the, 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 the helmets are so small, it's really hard to color it that way and get it to show up. It's really got to be something cool. For anybody who's really going to achieve a two-year helmet on this channel, it's got to be something special. So I'm thinking I might redo, I might do a special crest for two years. Um, oh, Stasa's in here. What's up, Stasa? If you're not subscribed to Stasa, you should be. Literally, all 127 people in here right now should be subscribed to, to Stasa23. I'm serious. You definitely should be. Digital camel helmet. That'd be cool, but again, it's gonna be hard to show up. I want it to I want it to be something that's clearly like this person has been involved with the channel for two years, right? Um half <laughs> God have <have> pickle. <laughs> Speaking of pickles, somebody tonight is gonna win. Uh, another, if I can pick this godforsaken thing up, here we go. Somebody tonight is going to win uh, the brand new holographic Pickle Night helmet sticker. Last live stream, we gave away the first live stream official. Pick, my, uh, to honestly, my patrons, uh, three of my patrons got the first three. But this is going to be a live stream thing from now on. Periodically, I'm going to give away these Pickle helmet stickers. So, yeah, this will be the fifth one that's out there. So, somebody tonight's going to win that. How? You'll just have to stick around and we'll play a game later. Or, I don't know, maybe it'll be less of a game and more of a just a sporadic thing. Um, but, yeah. Holy cow. Leap Vasudovin. Am I pronouncing your name correctly? If I'm not, I'm so sorry. But thank you very much for that donation. He says, how's it going? How's it going, buddy? Hey, welcome to the live stream. Thank you very much. Paul Myers says, at Stasa23, I just subbed to you. That's good that you did. You all should be. 110% greatest Wahlberg. <laughs> somebody, <laughs> Slicey's joke is, he has me in his phone as lesser Wahlberg, and somebody mentioned, uh, referring to me as greater Wahlberg, which I found flattering, so thank you. I would like that to to trend more than lesser Wahlberg. <laughs> oh, man. Can you show a close-up on the Benchmade bug out? Yeah, for sure. 
I mean, so it's a this the live stream camera does not show nearly as much detail as the regular because I have a special application that I use when I uh, film my uh, reviews. So we're not going to get the same type of definition. See if I come up close, like it doesn't focus. It's fixed focus, right? So it's only going to focus about right here. But yeah, nice gray G10. We've got the green standoffs back here, green studs. It's great. Uh, best uh, production version of the bug out out there right now. It's just a shame that it costs so much money. Let's see here. <laughs> Mr. McKenzie, that's good. There are a few people in here who know because I I mentioned it uh, many live streams ago, our very first uh, date. Y'all are welcome to guess. I'm not going to say that you're going to win anything if you guess. Uh, it's likely that you have one of these uh, establishments in your town. <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Yeah, smash that like button. We only, we've only we got 130 people in here and only 52 likes. Come on. All you got to do is just just move your finger or your mouse or your touchpad. Mouse. Who's still using a mouse? Maybe some people are. Maybe you're on a gaming computer, right? All you got to do is just cross over to that thumbs up. Just give it a quick thumbs up or thumbs down. And see, see some more salties in here. Five salties. <laughs> Not McDonald's, not Burger King. No. <laughs> you're, you're on the right track. <laughs> um, let's see. Ah, Dome Roamer, welcome to the Knights of the Round. Knights, raise your swords. All hail, Dome Roamer. Enjoy your exclusive Excalibur emojis and your badging system. Uh, it's a good enough time to plug that. If you're wondering what that's all about, uh, if you open up the description of the live stream right now, the very top link in the description of this live stream will uh, take you to my memberships page. If you want to join, uh, any you know, basically the the revenue that's generated off the membership program, it all goes right back into the channel, and you get to enjoy exclusive emojis that I created. They're all the swords that you're seeing in the chat. Um, those will be exclusive to you, and you'll also get a badge that will change colors the longer that you are a member. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to, it's there. Taco Bell, Knives with Brooke, she got it. <laughs> Our first date was Taco Bell. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I ordered like $13 worth of dollar menu slop and she had like a taco. <laughs> yeah, really crappy first date. But we, but, but she married me, so you know, that was uh, probably strike one. And I didn't, I didn't strike out though, you know, so that, it worked out. <laughs> Man, I've, listen, so I've, I've traveled outside of the United States multiple times and I've eaten a lot of crazy stuff. Um, I've also eaten food that I, I mean, I'm not trying to sound like a snob. I've eaten food that costs a lot of money and it, it just, it's food that's expensive as far as I'm concerned. Nothing that's overly expensive has, has ever impressed me over food that's moderately priced or inexpensive. I just, I find that I don't really have a refined palate. I like quantity. I like being full when I'm not on a diet. Taco Bell, it does it for me. If, if I won the lottery tomorrow, five, if I won a $500 million lottery tomorrow, I can guarantee you I'd still be eating Taco Bell in 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just not a complicated person, despite the uh, the complex being in the in the name, right? <laughs> Smothered and covered. Yep, that needs to be a T-shirt. <laughs> Let's see here, Tim Stevens. Anything over fifty bucks is presentation experience. I will say, um, so I've had I've had a lot of different steaks. Like in in Kansas, you can imagine, right? A lot of beef here. Um, the best, I've had steaks that, that cost much more than this, but truthfully, the best steak that I've ever had was a, um, it was actually a 50, it was a 59, $60, uh, Casey strip. Uh, and it doesn't sound like anything crazy. Best steak that I've ever had in my life. It, my wife and I almost like, we were almost in tears. It was that good. I was like, oh my gosh. All of a sudden, my, my whole body got warm. I think I started glowing white. The tables and chairs around me started getting pushed. Just like the, there was like 
you know, a pulse coming off me, pushing like other people. I was just like, oh, oh, what am I consuming? It's, it was so good. It was unbelievable. Ever done a 10,000 calorie challenge? Um, I did do, actually the same guy that owns the restaurant that I ate that steak at, he owns another restaurant in town called Tiger Burger. And uh, I did a uh, eating competition. It, it was 20 sliders and a pound of fries as fast as you could. Only one person has ever done it. I ate 19 sliders and three quarters of a pound of fries and almost died. I have to guess that that was at least 10,000 calories. I, I, I was dead for a week after that. Shoe Monster Tech, welcome to the Knights of the Round. Knights, raise your swords. All hail. Uh, am I saying his name correctly? Shoe Monster Tech, yes. Enjoy your exclusive Excalibur emojis and the badging system. Welcome. Um, let's see here. Is the Smooth Criminal really worth 290 bucks? I don't know. I mean, you know... His knives are made in the United States. There's more that go into them than, than a lot of other production knives. You have to really like the look, though. I mean, you can't, again, you can't really base it on the materials used. It's how it's made, where it's made, right? And most importantly, if the design speaks to you. Medford, the Medford Smooth Criminal, as far as my experience with them is their, their quality is there. They know what they're doing when it comes to lock up and heat treat. They are absolute, absolutely functional tools, right? So that it has to aesthetically uh, speak to you. Um, Knife Center exclusive CJRB Rhea and Packwood. That's cool. I didn't know that that existed. Hey, we got 142 people in here, and we're only about 20 minutes in. I wonder if we can hit 200 tonight. Who wants to take a look at the Demco, the King Blade, as I'm referring to it? <laughs> From now on, I guess. God bless America and God bless the Demcos. Guys, I know, you know, watching my channel, it always seems like I have to have some kind of big hype going on. I have to I always have to have some kind of chase, always giving something a new title, right? But I swear it, this is an organic part of my process. I knew that some someday there would be a knife that came about. That and I'm not saying I don't like my hinders anymore. I do, and I will continue to buy hinders. But after, you know, since the day that I first acquired my first hinder, like the Hinder XM18 has been my favorite knife since the very first time I acquired one, right? And it was a Spanto, just like this one. But I knew there'd be a day where I'd find a knife that brought me just a little bit more joy. And honestly, if you watch that video today about this, the King Blade, right? You'll know that at the end of it, I said, as of right now, this is my favorite knife in existence. Exactly this. It's just so amazing. Other than that, ah, that bill right there is the, it's the one thing, right? There has to be one nitpick. There's always one nitpick, right? Nothing can be perfect. King Blade, man. Thing is the shiz. Oh, let's see. How's it feel in the pocket? Feels like seven ounces of titanium. <laughs> it's, here's the thing, though. You know what's crazy? It's really not unbelievably thick. I mean, here's here it is up against the XM18. The, the tie on the uh, XM18, it's hard to tell, but the titanium on the XM18 is actually a little bit thicker. So truthfully, it's actually, I mean, it is longer and heavier in the pocket. It's all, I mean, my XM18 3.5-inch full tie is... 6.3 ounces this one and this is 7.1 ounces right so you're looking at three quarters of an ounce different but and this is taller right taller wider and taller whatever longer taller however you want to say that doesn't have a flipper tab but the ties thinner so it's not like it's an absolute pocket brick right we're not we, we are talking a thicker blade stock the Demco has an XM24, you know, sized blade, 180 thousandths or so, and this guy's 165 thousandths. So it's kind of like a larger XM18, three and a half inch fatty, not quite as long as an XM24. Yes, and I'm I'm understanding actually as of today that the Shark Lock was not something that was just poofed up into his head, into the, the Demco brother's head here in the last couple of years. Apparently that's been in development for a very long time. So I made the comment, my assumption was that he was trying to combine strength with fidget factor, when in reality they started 
apparently designing that lock well before the idea of fidget factor was prevalent in the knife world. So it just happened to work out. <laughs> Man, did it work out well. When that, if that thing ever comes to cold steel, oh my god. That is going to be like, there. there's going to be so many people beating down doors to buy if there ever is a cold steel version of this knife. Imagine with me, G10 and S35VN, uh, and it comes in at 180 bucks, 200 bucks. That's my guess. Yeah, people will absolutely buy it. How, seriously, how many of you would buy it? Exactly that. Black G10. S35VN, it'll probably be a satin finished blade, $200. 180 to 200 bucks. Seriously, I, I, I'm sure there, I mean, that's still a lot of money, right? But for those of you who, who like, you know, save up and, and buy a knife that you, you know, really want, or, you know, those of you who have been, you know, buying knives in that price range, w would, you, would you not buy it? I think they know. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Listen to me selling for, <laughs> hey, Cold Steel, check out my live stream. <laughs> No, they don't. Cold Steel's barely aware that I exist. Um, yeah, actually, Mr. McKenzie, I like that idea. I love the idea of a smaller AD20. Like if they had a big boy and a little boy, give me one like this and give me one, what do you think? Seven and a half inches? This guy's 8.5, 8.75. Uh, uh, seven and a half inches, about um, a little bit longer than the Spyderco Pair 3. I think a lot of people would like that. I think that'd be super cool. Um, let's see here. Monster Racing 38. MC is so popular that John Elway and Obama. <laughs> yeah, me and uh, me and Obama and John Elway, we go way back. <laughs> Oh boy. Nathan Crane, I lived in McPherson for a few years a while back. Always cool when you reference Kansas. That's cool, man. That's not far from here. That's cool. Yeah, there you go, Mr. McKenzie. He's already got it down. He's been thinking about this for a while. <laughs> How do I like the die wear? Dirk Warning, everybody. Subscribe to Dirk Warning if you want to see some of the craziest knives on YouTube. Seriously, it's worth subscribing just for that. The bonus is, is that he knows what he's talking about, and he's entertaining. Um, but, uh, yeah, the direware is really good. I was so surprised at the action. Man, I thought this would be so clunky. I've talked about this many times, but, man, this thing, it's a huge blade. And this isn't anywhere near their biggest model, but it, it's so clicky. Bam! Really nice. Look at this. Ready? Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo. Wow. It's like a folding tortoise. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, one sec. Just had to drink some Gatorade. Uh, how much is the Direware S ninety? Oh God, Dirk, you're gonna have to help me out with that. I think that's a. I think that's about an eight hundred dollar knife. Um, the blades have it. You know what's crazy though? This thing has a ridiculous hollow grind. Um, it is. It is stupidly thin right here. This part of the edge is so thin. Oh my god! But it's about as thick up here as the uh, the Demco. Um, it's it's very thick on the spine, but it gets so thin down. It's just insane. That's a really aggressive grind that they've got going right there. Tucker S says, "Howdy, Metal Complex. How's it going? It's going good. Tucker, how are you?" Um. Da, 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 da. Thin and sharp, yeah, for sure. I sure, man. Speaking of the, um, oh, we got to talk about this freaking. <laughs> Listen, if any knife in the knife world came close to being the same thing as a rocket launcher, it's the, um, <laughs> it's the Recon Forty from Guardian Tactical. This is a huge OTF. This is gigantic. And it fires because it has that bearing, that, that steel plate with a bearing switch. Oh my gosh, this is huge. I didn't think a, 
there was an OTF out there that could make my combat Troodon seem kind of not huge. Yeah, this is this is a tank. This is a tank of an OTF. It is ridiculous. God, the firepower on this. Boom. Heavy blade coming out of there. Not a thin stock either for an OTF. If you like big, meaty, robust knives, but you like OTFs too, that thing is a monster. Yeah, I'll put it next to the Combat Troodon for sure. I took a picture on Instagram, but I'll do it here on the live stream. Okay, Combat Troodon. You ready? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's insane this thing is so big oh my god it is so big seriously this thing is just enormous and the handle also that i mean like if you don't like excess thickness right you know th this thing is big all the way around it is a big boy both of these fire hard honestly the recon fires just a little bit harder. There is noticeable additional recoil in the uh, in the uh, the recon forty. Here's handle to handle, but yeah, it's a big boy for sure. Big old meaty tanky tanky boy. It's like if Bill Goldberg was a OTF. Oh, what am I doing here? There we go. Ah, let's see here. Um, who doesn't like excess thickness? So I became a father. Oh, wow, <laughs> Mackenzie with the, with the, with the, uh, the, the, the zingers and the snap. But whatever, nice one, nice. Yeah, I, I, I like overbuilt knives. I'm always gonna like overbuilt knives, right? Honestly, I've considered. Um, talking with, with Mr. Griffith about just making me some ridiculous overbuilt tank of a knife just because it's funny. Obviously, I'd be paying way too much money for something that is not really functional, but I just find it interesting. Massively overbuilt knives, uh, just on a novelty level, are really, really interesting to me. I just like them. It's, uh, it's such a silly thing to create an object, right? Based on an object like a folding knife that is obviously designed to do one, one particular thing, and that's cut. And then to completely and ironically undo that, to unravel it from the fibers of its, of its existence and make it so thick. It's just funny. It's fun. The brown cortex? Yeah, for sure. This guy right here. Yeah, she's a beaut. I wish I could say that these were available, guys, but they are not, and they are pricey on the secondary market. This is a beautiful, beautiful knife. We do have texturing up here on the bolster. This You can't really see it. It's blue-laced carbon fiber. Oh, boy. Very beautiful. Absolutely nice and thin. Very thin behind the edge. A lot of little tiny elements here. I'm actually going to have to speak with Mr. Brown before I do the review on that guy. Um, a lot of these knives that are more expensive, there's just more to, more research to be done before I slap together a review. It's a lot easier to, easier to do a review on the Boker Kalashnikov than it is on the Brown Cortex. I got to get stuff right, and there's all I always miss at least one thing um, on uh, on on those really expensive, really uh, odd ones. Ever review a knife that's available for purchase? Is that a serious question? <laughs> Can you, you guys want to answer for Jim? Do I ever review knives that are available for purchase? <laughs> hey guys, if you're shopping for knives and gear, <laughs> check out the links in the description for some great retailers. <laughs> uh, yeah, I always, I, I intentionally review knives that are for the most part available. I'm 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 not making fun. I'm just, I'm just joking around, Jim. Um, but yeah, um, I uh, intentionally review primarily knives that are available, but I also review knives that are not available because I have a general interest in them, and I do not want my channel to be 100% based on knives that I can make commissions on. That's how those affiliate links work. I'm very open about that. If you guys use my links, it benefits my channel. But if I only reviewed knives that were available and I gave positive reviews to everything, it might raise some red flags. 
So I give positive and negative reviews to knives that are both available and not available because I like being honest. You guys decide if you want to buy them, right? Uh, let's see here. Do I think it's dumb to customize a bug out? Absolutely not. I think the bug out needs to be customized, especially if it's the, just the regular one. Fortunately, the bug out's on the custom shop now through Benchmade, so you can actually customize it from the factory. The MC <laughs> SAK. <laughs> uh, I've tossed that idea around. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, it kind of seems fun. And then I, I've seen some other people do it, some other YouTubers and some other. And I just, I don't know. Like, the most popular one that, like, a big, like, not saying I'm a big name, but like, here's an example of a big name in the knife community that, that was successful, like, really successful in that. Ben Peterson and the Wee Banter. There's an example of a successful, right? But way more people know who Ben is than people who know know who I am, right? So, I don't know. I maybe maybe way down the road it would be fun to do something like that. But yeah, I don't know. Maybe Swiss Army knife version, the metal complex Swiss. Army. Be cool to get my badge, like on a Swiss Army knife. That'd be fun. Um. I'd buy a Swiss Army Knife Classic with a helmet on a Harvey. That's a cool idea. I would, too. <laughs> That'd be cool. I'd like them to do a gold one. Or a silver one with a gold helmet. Or maybe a gold one with a silver helmet milled into it. But I think that... I don't know. I mean, I'm just like... guess. Like, I'm just like, that'd be cool if that existed. Hey, there's 186 people in here tonight. Thanks so much for joining the live stream. Let's see if we can get it to 200. Glock Shooter 24, thanks for the donation. If you were to des design a knife, what manufacturer would you want to work with? Truthfully, if I was going to design a knife and work with a uh, work with a company, it would it would be a company from the United States. I would be very interested in way down the road, hypothetically, working with ProTech. I have an enormous amount of respect for ProTech. Have you guys ever heard anything like seriously? ProTech has so much, like, their backing with the community is so positive. U.S.-based company. They release model after model after model that are home run. They have in-house designs. They work with other. They've taken models that, that you know, were pretty good and made them better as autos or button locks, right? Man, Pro, I, yeah, I like ProTech a lot. I very much do. Not nothing against other companies that are not based in the United States, but that's how I think. You know, I will. I've always recognized quality, no matter where it comes from. I don't care where a knife is manufactured. If it's a good quality knife, that's I'm going to say that. But as far as like me personally, if I if I was going to work this again, this is hypothetical and something that would not occur unless it was way down the road, right? Yeah, Protec. I I have an I have an insane amount of respect for that company. Absolutely. Yeah, and Dave is like an incredible person. And everybody that worked all of the contacts that I've spoken with for ProTech are just unbelievably polite and and informative. They they respond quickly. They give me all the information that I could ever need and they're really cool. Like they're just they're just cool. ProTech is a great company. God bless ProTech. The Malibu, the Malibu, the SNG Auto, and the um, Prometheus Design Works Invictus Auto, and the Rock Eye. <laughs> yeah, those four. Those are probably my favorite Protex, production Protex. And, and I, I mean, like, some of them are like sprints and like limited stuff, right? ProTech has so many good models. It's just really hard to not... Most ProTech models are good. Like, if you've ever wondered, like, should I spend money on a ProTech? The answer is yes. The hard part is not whether or not it's worth the money. The hard part is which model do you go with? Which amazing model from ProTech do you buy, right? They're all great. You know, all these people just not, like, listing every model from ProTech. There's a million of them, right? They're great. I don't think... FL Knife Life, that's a good question. I can't think of a bad, I can't think of a ProTech knife that I was like, this is not good, right? Everything, even like the worst ProTech I've ever reviewed, I'm like, it's pretty good. <laughs> it's pretty good. 
<laughs> That's the worst review a Protec has ever got on my channel. It's, it's pretty good. It's a solid B plus, right? It's still a grade you can bring home to mom. <laughs> Oh, let's see here. Can you talk about Benchmade yet? What do you want me to say about Benchmade? I like Benchmade. Their quality control seems to be getting better. They still have an issue with their pricing, but they also arguably have the best warranty on the market. They're an American company, right? Not everybody likes Omega Springs, but personally, I've never had an Omega Spring fail, and I've definitely handled my, share, uh, my fair share of Benchmades. Yeah, the Protec Mordax, there's another great one. Geez, I'll add that one to the list. Protec Mordax was amazing. How long have I been collecting knives? About 10 years. Yeah, technically, like, buying knives not with the intention of using them just to have them, probably 10 years going on 11. Hinder, no choil or choil? Matthew uh, Hargreaves, uh, no choil is my... It, despite me having sold my no choil to pick up, um, wait, I'm sorry, no, I was saying non-flipper, I'm sorry. I'm going to go with choil on the, I'm so sorry. I mix up non-flipper and flipper and choil and no choil sometimes. Uh, no, I, I like the hinders with the choils, definitely. But I would say more. there are more people out there who prefer the, the non-choil version. Excuse me. 188, 190, we're going to make 200 tonight. Like I said, if you guys want to join the membership program and become a knight of the round. That was cool, right? Man, that was cool. Can't take that back. Um, <clears throat> there is a, a, a link right down at the top of the description where you can join Knights of the Rounds. It will highlight you in chat. You'll become a permanent member as long as you so choose to. You can cancel it whenever you want to. But uh, yeah, you get the swords, you get the badging system, all that stuff. Um, let's see here. And also hit that like button, because there's only 116 and 197 people watching. We're going to break 200 tonight? Come on. Two more. Just hang tight. 200. There we go. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Do I like K-Bar knives, or Kabar knives, however you want me to say it? Is the deadbolt lock half as strong as the triad lock? I do like, uh, Kabar, K-Bar. I do. Um, I think they make a, I think they made so, uh, solid fixed blades. Um, theoretically, I think people are, have, have said the deadbolt lock should be in, you know, in, I mean, how, and it depends on the circumstance, but both of them are completely and totally overkill for a folding knife. They both have such excessive strength, right? You can't go wrong with either. Um, CRKT needs to work out their, their action a little bit better. I still prefer most cold steel triad lock knives over the models that are being released from CRKT with a deadbolt. That they need to figure out their steel thing if they want to appeal to the knife enthusiast market. But they've got some solid designs. Don't wave off CRKT. I promise you, well, I'm not going to promise you, but I'm going to say, ah, watch them. Because they're clearly capable of some professional machine work. They do have access. Obviously, they, they will use titanium and M390 and some of those other you know higher-end materials. Um, they can work out their action, right, their tolerances and things like that. I can see them really, you know, starting to appeal to more people. Do I have a Microtech with a Hellhound? Yeah, I just showed it a second ago. Um, here, I'll show it again. This is my wife's Christmas present to me in 2018. No, this is 20, 2019. Hang on, let me look at this. Yeah, 2019. My wife gave me a, um, a uh, combat troid on for Christmas uh, with the Hellhound blade. Love it. Oh, uh, let's see here. Yeah, exactly. You guys are nailing it. Tungsten Curbide and Nerve 102. They, you guys have it exactly. CRKT has great designs. They just use cheap materials too often. Um, hey, M, thank you very much for that donation. And yeah, you too. And happy early Thanksgiving to everybody. Absolutely. Very cool. Excuse me. I'm trying to think of more excuses to talk about my Demco. <laughs> um, I'll tell you guys this right now. Let me let me say this. I, I talked with them and I made sure that it was okay for me to say this. Um, so there are a lot of these. It's like I said in the video today. 
They are tr they are doing apparently everything they can to make so many of these. And there's there are large shipments uh, plans to come out. They they told me specifically DLT trading is definitely going to get more. So you can use my link if you want to. You can use my link and sign up for email notifications. <laughs> but yeah, they're going to do that. They also have you know different blade steels um, offered, and they've got a couple with the uh, I think the DLC coatings coming. And then their plan is to do different blade shapes in the future. So, given that information, will I buy another one? Abso-effing-lutely. This will not be my only 8020, and I have not had the urge to purchase more than one of the same model for a very long time outside of Hinderer. But I will definitely own more than one of these. Absolutely. So, yeah. If you're trying to get your hands on them, they're expensive. 425 for the base MG. Machine ground version, six hundred and twenty-five bucks for this guy. More for the custom, but if you're gonna if you're gonna hunt down, you know the MG tie or G10, yeah, more. When I have no idea. They didn't they didn't tell me that. And even if I asked, they wouldn't tell me. <laughs> I talk too much. I talk with. I mean, not like I tell secrets. I mean, literally, I just talk a lot. I don't like to know secrets anyway. I'd rather just not know. Um, wish the 8020 wasn't so expensive, but it's a solid knife. Yeah, I mean, hey, if Cold Steel picks it up, then there you go. It, it, that'd cut, that'll probably cut the price in half. Are Hawk deadlocks worth the money? Well, those Hawk knives, those are, those are custom knives, or at least semi-custom. It depends on how you define it. There's a lot more that goes into those. But they are absolutely solid, and um, as far as keeping debris out of the lock and out of the pivot, they're, listen, that, that's a totally unique thing. Fidget factor, lock strength, and also resiliency over time. Those guys are, free, those guys are freaking mad scientists. So if you put value into any of those things, I'm going to say yeah. Actually, I really want to. I, I, I have begged so many people, like, do you still have your deadlock OTF? The, the hawk uh, deadlock i want if anybody in here if you have one of those i really want to review it <laughs> i just want to experience it just once i would say yeah uh for people who are hunting down things in that price zone yeah probably so um entry level demco 8020 is 450 not bad at all but materials price it yeah, but it, don't get hung up on the materials thing. I mean, we're all like, like, like G10 is something that you're going to see used in a massive range, right? Just because you can get G10 on a budget knife doesn't mean that it's not an appropriate material on a more expensive knife. They have to consider balance. They also have to consider the environment, what types of stuff, what types of liquids might come in contact with the knife. G10 is an excellent material for a knife that's meant to be used. A lot of people have different feelings about whether or not knives are, are meant to be used in different price ranges. If you've been used to purchasing knives around the $50 mark, it's really easy to come to the conclusion that a $450 knife is something that's more meant as pocket jewelry and not something that's meant to be used. Whatever your feelings are, the knives like, for example, the, the AD20 is absolutely designed to be used. And given that, they have to you know, consider what materials would work good on a knife that's meant to be used. And G10 is really, really good at you know resisting heat and cold. It does not expand or contract. It's waterproof, right? It's very chemical resistant. It's very grippy. It's very durable, right? It makes sense. A lot of what you're paying for goes into how it's made, how many processes, right? How, how much time goes into the thing, where it's manufactured, right? So understandably, the materials may not be justified for all people, but... I always urge people, don't get too hung up on materials, right? Now, if they're using OS 8 and FRN and charging you 450 bucks, there's some red flags there, right? There's obviously better materials. But, yeah, for what they're doing in the $425, $450 range with G10, 20CV, and that amazing shark lock, I think it's completely justified. Stacy Bolstered Blades, thank you very much for that donation. She says, happy Thanksgiving, y'all. Hey, thank you very much, Stacy. Very cool. Yeah. I guarantee you a lot of people who picked up the Demco in G10 or Thai, whether or not they intended to use it when they bought it, 
guarantee you a lot of people use those knives. A lot of because they are screaming to be used. These things are so like the moment that you pick this thing up. Oh god, the power surging through my veins. Oh my gosh. Listen to this. God bless it. <laughs> it's just so good. Oh my god. Direware is great, Tungsten. Direware is awesome. The pocket clip is ridiculous, but the rest of the knife is super cool. Um Do you like the M4 bailout or the 20 CV bug out more? Hmm. That sounds like an interesting video. Yeah, I've got a video um, where I actually discuss specifically the M4 bailout versus the 20 CV bug out. These are the two best production versions of each of these knives. Um, and both of them have their pros and cons, but uh, they deserve a battle. This would be a great battle, and I promise you guys you're going to get that soon. You're going to get individual reviews on each of these knives. I'm late to the game, as per usual, on reviewing these. Got to do this one. This will be more of an overview because I've already reviewed the bug out. Technically, I've already reviewed the bailout, but in my opinion, this is basically... I'm just going to kind of pretend the 3V bailout didn't exist. This is the best version of the bailout that exists. I will tell you I like the aluminum on that guy a lot more. Um, let's see here. MC, did you see the Maximum PM2 in stock? I did. Was that, uh, I can't remember if it was a GP Knives um, or if it was where it was, but I actually posted a story for a day about it, a swipe up story. I finally got swipe up because I um, uh, finally reached 10,000 followers on Instagram. So thank you to everybody who follows me on Instagram for helping me reach 10,000 followers. That's cool. If you don't know you get something called swipe up on Instagram once you hit 10,000 followers and what it allows you to do if you are like me uh, where I have affiliate programs through multiple retailers I can add a link to my stories which you can't do um, you can only add one link to your um, to your bio but you can actually add a link to your story in Instagram it makes it really easy for people who follow you right if you, if like for example if I, th I think there's something really cool I'm trying to make people aware of something that came out, I can do a story about it and just include swipe up. So people seeing the story, they can swipe up, go right to the link. It works out for them because they can pick out something that they may not have been aware of. And at the same time, it benefits me um, through the affiliate link. So it's it's gonna win-win situation. So thank you to everybody who helped me hit uh, 10,000 followers on Instagram. That's cool. And I will use it wisely. I very rarely, you know, I very rarely use it. I only use it if there's something really cool that came out that I want you guys to be aware of. There it is. My newer beverage. What do I think of Rex 45? It's an absolute beast of steel. Uh, Rex 45 through Spyderco. Yeah. If there's a Spyderco model out there that comes in Rex 45 and you don't have to be concerned with corrosion resistance in your area, buy Rex 45. <laughs> that stuff is insane. I had a post on uh, you guys. I actually used Rex 45 for so long in my garage with that shaman. I actually ripped the calluses on both hands. Both hands, the calluses were ripped off from me using the knife for so long. And the edge was still shaving sharp. My calluses grew back, right? So I always think people are like, your hands are soft. You need to build up some calluses. Ca having calluses actually is worse in a lot of situations. You rip them off, it's terrible. But yeah, that knife ripped my calluses off over two and a half hours, and the Rex 45 still was going strong. Uh, Muhammad Amar, what's up, buddy? I'm late. We made it. Sup, MC? Hope you're doing well. Uh, well, I'd love to see a vid on the Recon 40 versus the Direct Delta. Similar size and price, both USA quality OTFs. Yeah, that would be cool. I'm going to have to do um recon 40 versus combat throw it on because i i did actually sell my direct delta and i know a lot of people are going what you said that was your favorite i'm always selling knives always selling knives to buy new ones but that would be a good comparison for sure um but i, I will do uh versus the combat throw it on and i will definitely do a separate review of the uh, recon 40 so you guys can all see it very impressive otf and the price point on it 350 to 375 bucks yeah yeah, <laughs> it's got a great price for what it is, for sure. 
How's the titanium Delica? I love it. So much more than a standard Delica, but I just, it's because I love titanium, right? This is a beautiful, beautiful knife. Wonderful EDC knife. You get to enjoy that full titanium aspect, but then I get to enjoy that. This is my dressy knife now. This is like my formal event knife, my Christmas party knife, right? For sure. What's the best hard use flipper that isn't a hinderer? Hmm. Prob <laughs> I want to say the ZTO 560, but that's a hinderer. <laughs> Man, I don't know. There's so many titanium. Well, there's so many uh, flippers out there that you could say are hard use. Uh, God. I don't know. I mean, I'd probably go with something from Riot. Um, the Rayot New Torrent is pretty heavy duty. Uh, and that was only a $350 knife or so. That thing came in RWL 34. Oh, ho, ho, ho. I, can you still buy the Rayot New Torrent? The Shiro, the Shiro Groff knives for sure, but those are super expensive. Um, yeah, the Torrent, the Torrent or the Jack, the, the original Rayot Jack, the, the integral, integral, whatever. I have to say both every time so people don't correct me. Um, well, but those aren't flippers, though. The 8015 and 820 aren't flippers. Um, but, yeah, for flippers, I mean, your sugar grops are going to be great. Uh, anything from Riot. Riot. Definitely. What do I think of fixed blades? I love them. But you guys always want me to review them but then when i do a fixed blade other than the hinder emmet they just don't get viewed the hinder emmet did fine i got three or four thousand views it's fine that's that's pretty good right for for an upload in a 24-hour period uh on this channel but every time i review a fixed blade you guys are like eh. <laughs> so as far as my viewing audience and that makes sense right the draw to my channel is my, like most of the people subscribing are interested in folding knives Right, so when I do a fixed blade review, people are meh. So I'd love to do more, but I gotta be really choosy about the fixed blades that I review, right? I'll still review it if I absolutely love it. That's the thing. I have to love it, and I have to, it has to be something I think you guys would be interested in, and you know, it has to have enough positive, right, to, to make it entertaining. Because if it's not gonna be something you're interested in, it's not something I'm interested in, then it's just not fun to do a video on. So yeah, the demographic thing, it's like, I, like I, I kind of know what you guys like to watch. You guys like to watch the stuff that I like to... <laughs> it works out for both of us. You guys like the stuff that I like, so it works out. <laughs> uh, let's see. Um, yeah, John Kobe, you could say anything's overrated, right? Nike shoes are overrated, right? The Ford Mustang's overrated. Budget canned diced tomatoes are overrated, right? Whatever. <laughs> everything's overrated and everything's underrated. Just, it's perspective. Coming from a guy who creates videos called most underrated or overrated knives, right? So I realize the contradiction there. But yeah, perspective. Um, companies who make knives in 440C and charge you 300 bucks. There's an example of something that's not overrated, just overpriced or overhyped, right? I'm talking about those OTF companies that are really trying to be microtech that I am very against reviewing on this channel. <coughs> Ravencrest. Sorry, that was a weird cough. Um, anyways. <laughs> oh my god, why do I think I'm so funny? That is so cringy. Um, let's see here. Um, I'm looking for a question. <laughs> Flippers don't intersect often with hard use. It depends on how you define hard use, right? Some people define hard use as prying with their knife, prying different things, right? If you're, if you're prying two pieces of plywood apart, most knives will do that, right? If you're prying an engine block out of an old truck, <laughs> no, you, then, you, then yeah. If you define hard use as chopping with your knife, right? Or maybe just continuous cutting against dense materials, right? 
there's infinites, infinite variables, right? So hard use is, that's way too broad of a term. I take that gray area pretty seriously. <laughs> it helps me really drive my point home, which ends up being foggy anyway when I do a 30 minute video on a discussion topic. Speaking of long discussion topics, tomorrow afternoon you get how important is lock strength on a folding knife, which was about a 30 minute video. Tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. Central Standard Time, you can hear me ramble on about that for, for nearly 30 minutes. Um, let's see here. Yeah, they do. Uh, CA knife style. Cold seal knives make a mockery out of other hard use folders that cost twice the money. That comes from the perspective of I only value durability, dependability in a hypothetical circumstance where I might need to use a knife for something completely and totally ridiculous. Now, let me contradict that. Again, I do this tomorrow too. How often are we doing stuff with our knives, right? How often are we doing those type of things? Less than 1% of us are using our knives for crazy insane stuff like the stuff that they demonstrate on those deals, right? Less than 1% of the time, right? It's really creative marketing. Knives that cost a lot more, right? Again, if your value system is entirely based on resiliency, durability in an extreme circumstance, then you're not going to see anything in a really, really expensive knife like the Hinder XM18. While the lock on the Hinder XM18 is probably not as strong as the Triad lock, right? It certainly is strong enough for everything that it was meant to do, and it's made out of more premium materials in a way that costs more money than a cold steel knife that appeals to an entirely different crowd. So again, perspective, 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 perspective. Value systems are different, right? Cold steel makes great knives, but eh. Not even looking at the chat. I'm sure I just stirred up a bunch of... I'm sure I just salted someone's onions. But! But! Try and look! <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, WFlow77 says, No offense, but cold steel cult followers are kind of toxic sometimes. I am also a perfect example of somebody who creates, like... Uh, like unintended toxicity amongst other parts of the knife community. I'm always trying to joke, right? Don't take anything too seriously. We all like knives, right? Some people are more or less toxic. There are good and bad people in any community, right? So I like to look at this as, hey, we all like knives. Let's have fun. Let's crack jokes. Let's realize what's funny, what's overblown, right? Just enjoy it. Um... Yeah, I mean, how much, like, what's, what's a normal amount of human force? That's a good point. He says, I need my knife, uh, Blaine Dexter says, I need my knife to be able to handle, like, 300 pounds. I don't know about y'all. It depends on how much human force that you're going to be applying to your knife on a day-to-day -day basis, right? If you can hang 500 pounds off the knife, right, like, against, like, what, like the weakest point of the, the, the lock to get it dis disengaged, great. But what's the natural amount of human force you're going to be applying to your knife? How is it applicable, right? It's crazy. It's like, you know, it's neat if your car can, you know, go, if, if your car can go 250 miles an hour, that's cool. The speed limit's 75 on the highway, right? <laughs> so it's cool. I get it. Like, it's definitely cool. Over, like, that's like bigger, stronger, faster, right? I get it. But it's still like, you're still just going to end up <laughs> having to abide by the natural parameters of your environment. <laughs> yeah, that is something that most non-knife people say in Wade. My friend says all knives are the same. All knives are, in, are the same in that they are usually designed to cut. And that is about it. That's the funny thing about that is that knives are very different outside of that. Um... Let's make an axe in 110V. <laughs> it's 110V. <laughs> I hope you guys always know that I'm joking. I hope you. I hope nobody ever gets really offended or bothered by me. I just. It's easier for me to make a joke out of everything, and then at the same time, like dive into the complexities of all this stuff, right? Dive into it and talk about it, but then at the same time, back up and go, "Wow, this is <laughs> complete and total insanity!" Right? It all boils down to knives are cool. 
knives are interesting. We all like knives, and we all have our own unique tastes, right? It's fun. Hope nobody ever gets super bent out of shape. I know some people do because they voice it in my, my, um, my comment section sometimes, but... <laughs> um, the ZT0770 has been your most favorite EDC knife so far. Oh crap, it's 105. Okay, so um, I have to give away this sticker. Five minutes of pickle time. What is pickle time? What the heck is that? This is this part of the live stream where, for whatever reason, months ago, one night, my brother and I decided to do this thing where we just replace one word in, in any knife, right? Like the Andrew Demko 8020, right? You would replace one word with pickle. So the Andrew Demko pickle 20, right? And it was really funny one night because somebody, I can't remember what the one that made me die was, but that somebody came up with a ridiculous name for a knife and it just cracked me up. So uh, in the next five minutes, whoever makes me laugh the hardest, who has the best one, I will give this sticker away. So go ahead. Throw them at me. Uh, yeah, yeah, Floydian had the Benchmade Mini Crooked Pickle is the one that I absolutely killed me the first time that I heard it. Everyday EDC, go subscribe to Everyday EDC. He's awesome. He says, raise your pickles. Thanks for that donation. <laughs> the Boker Pickle Off. <laughs> the Benchmade Super Pickle, heard that one. See, it's getting harder and harder because I've heard, heard so many of these. The Lightning Out the Pickle. <laughs> pickle Tillion, uh, Pickle Military 2.5, <laughs> the Chris Reeve Large Pickle. <laughs> this is so dumb. My channel is so stupid. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. This is what it's turned into. This is where you are right now. The Black Void Pickle it sounds awesome. I would buy that just on the name. The Kaiser Pickle Dog XL. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> pickle freak, pickle rekinder, pickle fudge sickle. That's not a knife. <laughs> half breed, <laughs> half breed pickle dog. Oh man, the imagery right there. That's a good one. <laughs> uh, oh man, pickle swags. <laughs> Some of these are good. Oh, I'm just right waiting for a real a real sledgehammer to the face here. <laughs> Rainbow pickles, the CVV pickless. <laughs> Steel wheel pickle it. The Tyad. I wanted to become a cucumber. <laughs> what? Oh man. Pickle brain Biden. Combat Truid on Hell Pickle. Gerber. <laughs> <laughs> the Gerber Strong Pickle. Oh my god. Pickle Shredder, Pickle Jim Rye, the Bounty Pickle, Blackout, Blackouted Pickle. Um, you know, hang on. You know who I'm going to give it to? Let me find it. The pickleball, I've heard that. That was funny. Um, let's see here. Gosh bless it. Where did it go? I'm looking. I'm looking. Pickle Tillion. Dill Destroyer. That, Nick Alvarez, that was creative. The Dill Destroyer. I'm, I'm backed up in the comments here. Um, yeah, I'm going to give it to Grumpy Grunt, actually. The half gr the half breed pickle dog. <laughs> that just That really rolls off the tongue. So, Grumpy Grunt, uh, congratulations. I am going to award you with the Pickle Knight helmet. Um, you can actually contact me if you're still watching. Um, you can actually contact me at metalcomplex87 at gmail.com. Uh, make sure that you uh, give me your shipping information and I will mail you that bad boy. Number five in existence. I will mail you that bad boy on Monday or Tuesday. You'll get it sometime late next week. So congratulations. Don't worry, I'll give more away. I do live streams every weekend. So if you're looking to get a pickle sticker or you join Knights of the Round and you're wondering, is my investment really worth it? I do live streams every weekend. And 
for those of you who joined the membership program, there, your badges actually show up in my comment section under regular videos. And apparently now you can use the emojis there too. So it doesn't just work in live streams. It actually works all the way across my channel. So yeah, they are, everybody uh, commenting in my comment section will see the badge. I'll see the badge, right? It's nice. I like, I like knowing who's a knight. So again, you can find that link right at the top of my description. People still, still going with the pickle stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I do this? What is wrong with me? You can imagine like other channels or other people who haven't been here have to be like, what the hell? Like, what is this place? <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you guys all kind of just go with it, though. You know, it's such a weird thing now. Oh, boy, this is a fun one tonight, guys. And we did break 200 again. That's fun for just a random knives and nonsense. Um, we've done a bunch of knives and nonsense in a row, so there we there will be a more themed live stream coming up. Um, I probably will do a mystery knife giveaway. Um, I might do a affect the outcome, right? Might do another uh, battle, like a live battle, where we come up with a random scenario and we all vote on which knives to like knock out. We did that a long time ago. Um, I'll do a community post. For the next live stream with like different types of stuff and i'll let you guys vote on what kind of live stream you want to see but yeah we'll play a game maybe not the next one but coming up we'll play a game um if you guys want to do stuff like that i know a lot of people like the more laid back like let's just chat about knives and random stuff but it's been a while you know since i've done something different so i like to kind of i like to mix it up on this channel for sure but anyways guys um, <laughs> blame Dex to do a thing where you drink hot sauce again. I've had many people say we'd really like you to drink like a more aggressive hot sauce. Um, I really can't tell you guys how much I don't want to do that. <laughs> I am so not interested in doing, doing that, but I don't know. Anyways, I'll tell you what. Uh, we'll come up with more fun stuff. Hey, I'll leave you guys with this. You 165 people who are in here, Christmas is coming. And I'm going to be generous. I'm going to be generous on Christmas. I, I got some fun stuff planned for you guys. How creepy was that? Oh, I'm generous. <laughs> oh, my God. What am I doing? <laughs> oh, my God. I got some cool stuff. I'm going to give some stuff away uh, coming up to Christmas. So... Yeah, um, there'll be cool stuff, um, stuff that you guys can get in on for free on this channel, something that you guys will all um, have access to, and it will be, it'll be pretty cool. So uh, I'm figuring it out. We got a ways to go, but yeah, there's some cool stuff coming. Okay, anyways, guys, uh, I appreciate you all hanging out tonight. This was fun. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your evening and a wonderful rest of your weekend. Bye.